Hello, welcome back. Wing Not Wings number 12 now. Wing Not Wings Wednesday number 12, should I say. Squeaky chair here. Um, so here we have the box of the Fokker E4. And here we have the repainted fuselage of the Fokker E4. And um, as you know from the last, last one we did, I had a nightmare with the decals all coming off and the paintwork and everything. So I sanded it all back and then given it another clear coat. And it's... That's it. Basically, we've got some gloss on there for the decals. Now, if you remember, I said I was having big problems with the decals. And then you remember, if you go back to Wingnut Wings 10, I did a whole trial here with, with, with these um, fins. Now, I've been doing some more trials with these crosses and these crosses here. So I've been having a nightmare. This one here has been put down on top of um, Alclad um, Aqua Gloss was the word I was looking for. So I thought I'll put a, 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 a spray some of that on, put the decal down on it, smooth it out and everything, and then see what it's like. Now we've got the tape here, so I can do the tape test, and as you can see, even though it's down on aqua gloss, it's still coming up. So absolute nightmare. Now this one here was put down on Mark Fit Super Strong, okay, and um and then Mark Fit Super Strong was put over there. I'm thinking it loud. Mark Fit Super Strong was put down on top of it. And as you can see, there we go. It could be just, it just, they just peel off. I mean, it's, you don't even need something sticky. Look, you can just peel them off. And this is a, a nice glossy finish here. I mean, it's an absolute joke. Is it? I mean, it's so annoying because, as I said before, I've done that um, Apache helicopter with those awful Tacom decals the worst decals ever and I can't get them off even with bloody tummy extra thin so this one here this was just put down on water and then mark fit super strong put on top and again as you can see I mean it's absolute crap so I got in touch with <laughs> look at that just lift the whole thing off um I got in touch with Ray Rimmel Ray Rimmel is the gentleman behind uh, Windsock, Albatross Publications, Windsocks, the, the great books and that you've seen me review. Um, Ray is a, an avid modeler. He used to be the editor of Scale Model magazine. And basically, sorry guys, I'm going to have to keep stopping because I've got this awful cough. Um, and basically, he is the he used to be the editor of uh, Scale Model magazine here in the UK. And he's got he's, he's a World War One aircraft fanatic, and he's slightly older than me I think so um I told him and he said yeah he said there have been issues with certain wing nut wings issued cartograph decals not sticking down I never knew this I, I know I'd heard something and he said use my crosset and a sole and you'll be absolutely fine and if you remember when I did one of these with this test when I put the micro set and sole down it all wrinkled up but then it didn't go back down now normally with micro set and sole with certain decals, they will all wrinkle up like wrinkle finish paint and then go back down flat. And that's you just got to leave them. But these actually wrinkled up with like, like creases. I think it was this one, creases along the length and it wouldn't go back down. Now I've managed to get it to go down by rolling it out and everything, which you shouldn't risk doing after you've put micro set and sold on until it's dry. Now these have then had a clear coat over the top. And as you can see, these are brilliant because you've got the clear coat over the top sealing them in. But I don't want to chance that with this. I want them to stick down. Now I did those decals with the crosses and everything on and the, and the, the cross here and the cross there and the, and the registration code there and everything. And I could just touch them and they would come off. It's like, it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's, it's like brittle paper. It's really, really weird. I mean, you saw how they just all broke off then. So what Ray suggested was, don't worry about this here. I put... Um, Mark fit on top of it and then forgot it and rolled it while it was still wet and I just took some of the decal off. You should never touch them after you've put this stuff on because this stuff is evil. Um, so what he suggested was, how about putting the decal down, instead of just putting water on your model, don't use any micro set and sole, just use um, thinned PVA. So what I've got in here is micro crystal clear, okay, which has been thinned with water. It's about I don't know, 10 to 1, I'm guessing, 8 to 1 maybe. Uh, but it's just to get some micro crystal clear. And then I remembered this stuff here, the Mr. Mark Setter Neo, this is actually 
white in colour as well. And I'm wondering if this is just a thinned PVA. When you look at the ingredients, it's got water, ester compound, which will give you the softening, polyvinyl acetate and polyvinyl alcohol and vinyl acetate. So I'm wondering if this is just basically that with a setting solution in it. So I'm going to have to do some more trials. So I've got the, I've got some old decals here. So what I'm going to do, just to show you how good this suggestion that Ray has given me, I've got these crosses here. If this doesn't work, and I, and I don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to go and get some aftermarket decals or just do a what if out of it or something. But I think these decals, I mean, they are, to be fair to Wingnut Wings, I mean, this kit was probably issued, when was it issued? Uh, -dum 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 -dum, 2013. So if this is one of the initial issues, these decals are like 11 years old. So, you know, it, you, you kind of expect them almost to be perhaps faulty. But we'll, we'll get these two crosses off here. And what I was going to show you is this one here I only did about four or five hours ago. And as you can see, it's resisting. And that has basically been put down on, uh, done in warm water, and then laid down on a thin PVA mix, and then Mark Fit Super Strong over the top. So what I'm going to do is put one here and one here. And what we'll do, we will first of all place, we'll get a, blotting pad here to put our decals on so we don't ruin our nice new paper top. So we'll put the decals in there, leave them for 20 seconds or so, and then we'll take them out, just let them sit. Come here, let's just let them sit there and dry out a bit, excess water off. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, we're going to use, we're going to use this one here. Okay, now the directions, I know we did all this in part 10, but this was to, that was to check solutions. This is to try and see, because I didn't do the tape test on these, because I wasn't aware they were going to be so bad. Um, but they surely are. So we've got plenty of that on there, and I, I reckon this is just basically thinned PVA, looking at it. Um, and then this one here, I'll grab a brush and we will put down some PVA. Now you can see the trouble is because of the gloss surface, the, um, there's no surface tension. Okay, so that's, that's going to slide off of there. So we're going to put, we'll put that one there and just to show you, even though you've got the PVA under there, you can still you can still slide the decal around and position it. Okay, just like so. Grab a cotton bud. Just going to roll that axis out of there. I need to get some new glasses, guys. I can't see a bloody thing. I just want to line it up on that panel line just to prove that it can be done. And I can hold it down with one finger. Remove the excess. And as you can see, it doesn't really matter on our Wingnut Wings model, but you can see that it's going into all the rivets and everything. So it doesn't matter on the Wingnut Wings model because we don't have any rivets. But um, the decal is going down beautifully and it's lovely. Now with this one, what they say is to put some underneath. We can slide the decal off onto there. Okay, and then I can position it just like so. Okay, and then just roll the excess out. Now this one has got a softening element to it as well, so it may be better than the white PVA, but it's just something I emailed Ray. Uh, when did I make the last, last video? Today is Thursday, the 25th of July, 2024. I made the last video on the Tuesday, so that would have been the 23rd. There we go. 
and then it tells you, I think, it tells you to first apply a quick drop, apply it additionally over the attached to deck or if necessary, remove any excess liquor and stick down fast. I don't know what they mean if necessary. I don't know what to look for to deem it being necessary or not. But uh, we'll put some over the top anyway because it has got a softening element to it. Okay. And then it says soak up the excess and stick down fast. Now I don't know if they mean stick down because it's Japanese translation. I don't know if they mean stick down fast as in do it quickly or stick down fast as in have it stuck down fast, you know, <laughs> like very well stuck down. Now that, I think, looking at this, I think this one has gone down better than this one. They've got this Airfix horrible grainy plastic from the Hellcat and it's sort of gone into that as well. So, so there we go. Um, I'm not going to use the Marfit Super Strong on these at this stage because I'm not sure if we need it because if they stick down well, the only reason you'd use this is to really get them to go down into all the nooks and crannies. But you can see this is just flat. There are no nooks and crannies. So I'm going to leave that for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and have a look at it. Okay, so it's been about three hours. All right, I've been doing a little bit of work off camera. I'll show you in a minute. And I've put another couple of decals down because I did forget one solution I've got. This is VMS and we all know how good VMS products are. Um, and this you just basically, it's called a decal adhesion booster and decal softening agent. So apply the fluid over the target area and then apply the decal, squeeze excessive fluid out and wipe away with the brush coat with water. If necessary, mold the decal using a cotton bud. After 24 hours, seal using VMS thinners, whatever. Um, clear. But this is not an experiment to see how good the setting solution is. This is an experiment to see what will work with these um, decals. Now we know that we don't like using uh, set and sole as we just said. So basically what I've done, I've got these little Fockery 4161s here. There's 163 there and 161 there. And I did that with with the VMS. So that was just after, so that's just under sort of three hours ago. Um, I also forgot to say, one of the decals I did, which came off easily, I just showed you, I think it was this one here, the cross that was here, I put that down with Decal Fixer. Now this is a Japanese product, you get it from Premium Hobbies, um, and it's like a, an adhesion booster, but it didn't seem to do anything, so perhaps not bother with that one. Um, now, as we know, uh, as I said earlier, this one was put down with Ray's Method with the white glue, and then I put the um, Tamiya Mark Fit Super Strong over there, and if I grab if I grab a new piece of masking tape just to make it fair and make it hard for everything, if I rub that down on there and I pull, oh, it does peel off. Okay, so with a new piece of masking tape, we can completely remove the decal. So basically, these decals are going to be an absolute utter swine. Um, they're just not going to go down, are they? Now this one here, I put down with the with the white glue, and I didn't put any mark fit on it, so. Yeah, that's just lifted. All right. This one here was done with the Mr. Hobby. This one here, the blue one. This was Mr. Mark Setter Neo. Oh, that one hasn't lifted at all, look. So if I really, really push this down, and then I get under it with a... Would you look at that? And that's not even on a particularly glossy surface. This surface here is much nicer. So, it would appear, my friends, that we have a solution. Look at that. What if I... Okay, it has just lifted a bit there in the middle. But it has, so you can see it's, but it's not ripping the decal off. I'm able to push it back down. Now I do know, you can see these here are all obviously Wingnut Wings decals and these here have been sealed over. So if we seal them over, it'd be absolutely fine. As I say, the problem I had was, I've never known it before. I've never known anything like it. If you can imagine having the model covered in grease, which is what I thought it was because of this bloody cream I have to put on myself. Um, I thought that was the problem and it's not. It's the, it's the decals, they're just not going down. So there we go. That's our secret then, guys. 
you can put that down you can slide the deck on around it doesn't grab it it doesn't pull it down straight away um, so yeah there's the secret now this these here we get another new piece of tape the ones I've done with the VMS yeah they're just coming off as well that things come off as whole one decor so there is obviously a big issue with these things you see that one's not coming off isn't that strange that's been done exactly the same and that one isn't lifting oh yes it is yes it is it's starting to come there we go so either use the VMS or this one the only thing I will say with this VMS the decals don't seem to like it very much it's the same with the um, it's the same with the micro set when you put it down the decals tend to grab and you they don't like moving around so I would thoroughly recommend that one and that's what I'm going to use on here wish me luck <laughs> hope I don't have to eat my words you will also see here we have a propeller and two bits of broken propeller I think at some point I must have been building this as version C and then changed my mind to build version B because I've added the plates on the cowl for version B but I've got the guns for version C and I was doing the propeller for version C so I've had to chop this propeller up to get this hub out to glue into this propeller and now I'm gonna to have to paint another whole propeller so I'm making a lot of work for myself now the guns the guns for version B which was maximum and plane they should have the round gun sights on them but because these are all brazed together and they're all those those ends are brazed on there's no way Am I going to take those off? I think they're braised on. If they're if they're super glued on, they'll come off really easy. Yeah, they're braised on. So I'm not changing that. This is this was the this was a Wednesday afternoon, and they changed the guns over. So you had to you had to have those sights. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So there we go. I don't think this model's going to turn out very nice anyway, because I seem to be messing up everything I bloody touch on it, and it's been going for years, as I say. Um, the other thing I've done while I've been off camera, I have painted the tailplane there and you can see it's a slightly lighter colour than the fuselage and the reason for that is I watched a plasmo video and I painted the wings as well okay and what he's done is used masking tape to make the ribs just sort of pop out so what we're going to do now is with a slightly darker colour probably that colour what I'll do is I'll just lightly go over the ribs and leave this green colour showing through between the ribs. So that should look quite good. Um, and I've only done one wing because we can take this tape off and use it on that wing. And then around the front here I've got Tamiya tape to depict the leading edge tape. Okay, so that's just round like that. Okay, so that'll just look like a... It's, it's very slight. It's just trying to make it look like because it's all taped everything's taped so uh, that's why I've done that and then when I turn it over I'll just push the tape over on this side so um so that's like that for this side for the top and then we'll turn it over turn the tape move the tape around and do the bottom so uh let's have a look at doing that okay so one of the things to remember guys as suggested in Ray's book with all wing nut wings kits always tape up mating joints don't take that up. That ain't going to fit in the fuselage. There is no tolerance for paint in wing nut wings kits. So um, we've got our got a cloth here. Just going to do a little test. Okay, so we've got our RLM 22. Sorry, XF 22 RLM 02. And all I'm going to do, I'll start with the bottom in case I mess this up. Um, no, I won't because I've got the tape done. Uh, basically, I'm going to just lightly spray this thing will go out a bit on there because of the I'm just gonna lightly spray this over the over the tape as you can see I'm not flooding it I'm just dusting it on and what we should end up with is contrasting colour it should look pretty good putting the tape on the ribs is a a tedious task always make sure you've got the tail hanging off the trailing edge this is one piece wrapped around the wing by the way there we go so I'm just gonna 
lightly go over the whole thing now just to bring it all in a bit and we'll also get some in here there we go so when we look at that we should see oh come on let go please we should see there we go it's very very subtle you've got the lighter green underneath that green okay looking at this i think we need to darken it up a touch because it's um it's not much of a contrast so i'm just going to add some gray to this and make it a bit darker i might make another little pot up and make another mix um it just needs to be darker i don't know how it's going to look against the fuselage but, um, it just seems a bit too subtle I know sometimes you want things to be subtle but I don't know maybe that is okay we can always play with the washes can't we yeah I'll leave it like that save mixing up more paint won't it? and I think it'll all um, I'm gonna have to play with some fading anyway when I get the um, the crosses on the German crosses There we are. Right. So what we'll do now is take this tape off of here and then reapply it. You can see the effect on the front edge there. We've got the, or maybe you can't. It's very, very subtle, isn't it? I think it's too subtle. I'm not sure. Mm. It's not the effect I was looking for, put it that way. You can see it there. Yeah, I think we'll start on the outer edge actually because we can line up where the tape finished. If I had to take the right way up it would help wouldn't it? So that's where the tape finished. It was just there. There. Right. Go down you swine. Right. there we go so that's down like that right so that's the underside and now we can do the same again we can come in with our RLMO2 remember these wings being painted you won't be able to see through them so we're not trying to get the, the see-through effect Plasmo covers that in his, in his video as well And he also shows you how he makes masks and does his own paints his own German crosses. There we go. So just over there to get the effect. Just running on that front edge. So there we are. So we can transfer that onto the other wing, get that one painted, and we're good to go. So uh, see you in a minute. Oh, we've got to do the tailplane as well, haven't we? The tailplane is very, very subtle. So what I'm going to do here is just a visual and just go in between the ribs with this RLMO2. Just to give it a very, very subtle look. You can see it there because the paint has a sheen. Of course, we're going to be putting all the washes and everything on this, so it'll all blend in, it'll all become one. Might even use a filter on it as well. There we go, you can see I've just sprayed in between the ribs with the darker colour, and it just gives it, I don't know if you can see it, but I can, it just gives it a bit of a, a sort of shadow effect. There we can see the tailplane on the aircraft there. Sorry, like that, like that even. Yeah, so you can see it's got a there's some tonal changes there, which is good. That's what we want. It wouldn't all be just one colour, would it? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'll get this done and I'll see you back. it be tomorrow now for me, but in a minute for you. Two days later now, guys, we finally got there. We finally got it done. Um, I used that Mr. Mark 
Is it Mr. Mark Setter? Mr. Mark Softer? Which one is it? The new one. Come here. Mr. Mark Setter Neo. Worked a treat. Absolutely worked a treat. Even with these tiny little ones. I did actually use some micro set and sole on these as well. So I put down the Mr. Mark Setter. Then I got them to go down and then I put some set, um, um, micro set on them. And then I put some micro sole on them just to make sure they didn't come up and they've stayed down beautifully. It's then had a flat coat. Um, uh, oh, and also the other thing I did, the same as these wings, you can see now with the flat varnish on here, it's sort of more accentuated. You can see the green ribs and the green in between. Um, in fact, the camera's picking it up a lot more than you can see it in real life. So uh, that's looking good. Um, got the tail plane done as well. Got the little serial number decals on there. All sealed in with a, with a coat of LP23 flat clear. So as you can see, it's not dead flat. It's got a little sheen to it, which is good because I think these did have a slight sheen. We've also got the, um, the fin slash rudder there. Again, with the little serial number on the bottom. That's all sealed in. So that's all good. And these crosses on the wings went down a treat. Um, they, yeah, they, they really have gone down lovely. You can see there's no air under them or anything. They, I, I did a lot of work. I spent probably 10 minutes on each one, rolling it out, rolling it out, rolling it out, putting somewhere on the top, rolling it out, rolling it out, and just making sure there's no air bubbles around these, around these ribs. Um, obviously, they're going to get weathered in a bit, but uh, be very, very careful with sanding them and stuff, because I think they'll just peel if I try and sand them. So uh, there we go. So yeah, all looking good. Now, this fuselage is determined to fight me until the very end. Um, before I put these down, I polished the um, the Aqua Gloss. I polished it to get a really nice finish on it. And in one little patch here, I went through to the LP9 that's underneath, the gloss coat I put underneath. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I can. There's a glossy patch here will not go flat the flat goes down it just goes glossy straight away same over here there's a line there there's like a it's like a raised line where i sanded out there there was a hair or something i don't know if you can make that out but there's a, a glossy patch so i'm going to have to go over the whole sides again with aqua gloss to seal them in it'll also help to hide i don't know if you can see the, these decals are they're the worst cartograph decals i've ever used i've got to be honest they're they're crap um, in a word, they're absolute garbage. Having said that, they are, you know, they're over 10 years old, so that's probably got something to do with it. But they are absolute crap. Um, they don't stick down, they're thick. And I've also got a book I've got to do a review for you as well. And I notice in there the guy says, you know, the thing is with these wing that wings cartograph decals, they always crack up and he shows pictures of them all just cracking up. They're no good at conforming or anything. They're just, they're horrible. They're not a patch on Airfix cartograph decals. So, Obviously, things have changed or they specify a different thing or something. I don't know. But anyway, there we go. So there it is. It's going to be weather to hell. All this here will be soaked in oil um, all the way back to here. It gets soaked in oil down here. So uh, we'll see how that looks. But I want to get a, cut, a clear cut anyway because there is quite a step there. I can see around that, that Fokker E4127-15. So we'll give that a coat of that. That's got to be left for about six or seven hours to dry. And then we'll give it another flat coat. And hopefully we'll have a nice even finish then. Oh, the hours I have put into this bloody fuselage, honestly. Honestly, it's, it's probably 20 hours I've put into this. It's just, I feel like thrown out of the window. I really do. Anyway, I hope it's worth it in the end. <laughs> and there we go. Finally, at last, we have actually got this effing fuselage done. Oh, remember the work I had to put into this bloody scene here and then all the trouble with the paint and the decals and everything has gone wrong. If it could have gone wrong, it went wrong. I was putting the flat on and a great big lump of something came out of the airbrush onto the back here. You can just see it there. I sanded it and sanded it and then went over it again. I'm going to have to put some weathering in that area. Maybe a bit of bird dropping or something. Which we don't often see on model kits. But the book I've got to review and show you is a perfect example of where they've used bird droppings to hide, well, a bird dropping to hide a flaw. Absolutely brilliant idea. Um, so yeah, there we go. So that's the, the fusel that was done for, I think it's maximum one. Uh, wings are done and we've got the, uh, the tape off so we can sort of partially wedge the wings. I don't want to push them all the wings. I might not be able to get them out again. I'm not sure they're even going to need glue these wings. They're so tight. So there we go. 
there's our wings on and then we can stick our tailplane in the back there. Come on, go in. And then the fin, I don't think I'll be able to dry fit the fin. Now I have to put the tailplanes in all the way to get the fin to go on. But you get the idea of how it's going to look. So there we go. Actually coming together. So I think we're nearly done. So there I am going along and I thought right, what I need to do is paint the wheels. Because if you remember the one I was doing the version C had the white and black wheels. So I got the decal off of there. Easy to just a bit of sellotape off they came. But they don't stick at all. They're garbage. Um, so yeah, I got that off and then I thought, right, I'll paint the wheels now with the XF22 RLMO2. So I did that and I'm thinking, oh, hang on, I'm, I'm losing a lot of detail. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to put a gloss coat on because we've got decals to go on. So I put a gloss coat on and that ran and then I knew it's one of them had a hair in it. I said, oh, for God's sake. So we've got some IPA in here and we're stripping them back to bare plastic so we can start again on them. These World War One kits are a lot of work. There's a lot, a lot of work goes into them. We've got all the wood graining and the rigging and the interior and all the cables and a lot, lot, lots and lots of fine detailed bits and pieces, of different colours and everything. Lots and lots going on. Um, it's not just like painting the cockpit grey, picking out the instrument panels, you know, throwing on some Quintus Studios or whatever and there's your cockpit done. These are a lot, a lot of work. But this one... If it could have gone wrong, it's gone wrong. The only thing that went well was these wing decals. Um, that's the only thing that went well. Everything else has just been a nightmare. You can see we've got the, the compass in there now as well in the wing. So that's it. And these silver panels there I airbrushed in. Um, but yeah, so really now it's just a bit of detail painting and the rigging and we're done. I'm going to have to do these wheels again, which is a ball ache. But there we go. So, uh, and in between, I'm working on the gannet. We've got all the undercarriage parts here ready to go. So, uh, anyway, let's um, let's see where we go from here. This bloody thing. I, I, oh, I've got to finish it now, haven't I, guys? I've got to. Uh, thank you to John Kelly for, uh, for for sort of giving me the kick up the ass. He said, um, "Come on, Nigel, you've got to complete that little fucker." So, the little fucker will be done. We are back and we are flat coated and at last we have a good looking model. <laughs> We've I've just noticed there's a line there. I don't know what that is. It's a, oh, it's just a mark. So um, yeah, really, really nice. Uh, I've painted this here and I painted these on here because the decals are horrible. We've got the decals on there, okay. But um, yeah, I gave it another coat of... Um, I can't remember where we left off. Um, I gave it another coat of the uh, aqua gloss and then another coat of the flat and it's lovely now. You will notice as well, I used this stuff here, Micromask, um, on, the, on the aluminium here. And you can see, you, well it's difficult to see, it's removed some of, the, um, some of the paint. So I've lost some of my effect there. It's okay on this side, but on here, I don't know if you can see it. If you catch it in certain lights, it's okay, but the lucky thing is, is when you come to put the wing in place, as you can see, a lot of it is hidden. It's only that little bit at the top you're going to see, which is going to be sort of weathered with dirt and oil anyway. So um, I'm not going to risk messing up the rest of it just to get that bit right. So be very, very careful with that liquid vinyl mask. Obviously, it's pretty strong, pretty strong stuff. Having said that, it was on there for a while, but I don't see how that should make much of a difference. So I'll definitely be using the VMS from now on. Um, so uh, the, the VMS mask is by far the best, I think. The only trouble is it dries up a bit in the bottle, I think. But um, I think they will do. So what have I been doing? I've got all this clear coated. We've got all the bits and pieces here. You can see we've got the wheels done and the decals on and everything. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got the wrong gun sights. So there we go. There's a little decal that's supposed to go on there. I think that's a clock or something. And uh, as soon as I took it off the sheet, it just disintegrated. So we'll have to get something out of the air scale um, for that. Something out of the air scale set for uh, just get a, get a fake white dial on there. But uh, no, we can see the cockpit detail and all there is, is lovely. But the trouble is, once we cover it up, uh, that is going to go on there like that. You can see that. And there's this fairing going on the back here. So you can see that once that all goes on, you can't really see much in the cockpit at all. You, you, in fact, I'm saying about 
putting that decal on for the guns, there's absolutely no point because once that canopy's glued on, indeed if we have to glue on, maybe we don't need to glue it on, um, we could perhaps have it removable so that we can see in there. We shall see. It's a very nice fit, isn't it? It's a beautiful fit. So there we go. And obviously then the cowling's going to sit in there like that. That's all very nice, and as you can see, we're starting to look like a white little fucker now. So uh, there we go. So that being that, you've seen just over half an hour of building in this video, which is unheard of. I've lost one of these as well. I've had two of these ever since I've had this kit. I cut all the sprues up to get rid of all the because there's loads of spare parts in this one, loads of options because they've used obviously a lot of E3 sprues. Um, I think you get like almost another complete cockpit, I think. Uh, but basically, um, that's a little thing for the wheel. You put the inner wheel half on, then you slide that over the axle. Uh, it goes in that groove there, that goes over there. And then you put the other wheel half on and it holds it in place. And that way you can turn the wheels. I'm not really worried about having turning wheels, to be honest. So I just glue them on. In fact, they don't even need to be glued. I think they're quite a tight fit. So the propeller needs to be painted. I'm, I'm trying to do some research. I think the propeller is like a solid brown rather than wood grain. We shall see. Um, so there we are. So my next step now is to decide what I'm going to do. As for the rigging, um, I will do a video about the rigging, but I don't think I'm going to be able to actually film anything because I need my magnifiers and everything to see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to really cock it up and go start breaking stuff, I expect. But what I want to try and do, I mean, I've looked at um, Ray Rimmel's book um, and because because of the design of this aircraft, basically you have this here and then there's a frame. In fact, where on earth is that frame gone? There's a frame that goes up on the top. What have I done with that? I hope I haven't accidentally thrown it away. There's a frame that goes on the top. Um, oh, there it is. Phew, I thought I'd thrown it away. I'd forgotten I painted it. So there it is. It's got a little pulley on it and you've got those two little turnbuckles you can see there. Um, and basically that's going to sit up here like that. And then you've got a cable which comes down from that turnbuckle, down through that wing, out the other side, goes down around the undercarriage, up the other side, through the other wing, back up to the turnbuckle, back down into that inner hole there down to the undercarriage, back up, up through that inner hole, back up to the turn bubble. So you can use like one piece of easy line to do all of that. Now that's okay, but there's supposed to be turn buckles here. And I've seen what Ray's done. He's actually used um, photo etched turn buckles and glued them onto the top of the easy line. I want to try and use, because Gas Patch have been good enough to send me theirs and um, ASK. I want to see if I can get away with using theirs. And I'm trying to think of a way that I can fix the turn buckle to the upper wing and the lower wing and have them flexible so that when I, I can actually use easy line because the trouble is with the fixed point turnbuckles you glue them in and then you kind of get your turnbuckle on this angle and then the cable comes off like that and it just doesn't look right they, they need to be in exactly the same line and if you use the metal ones be very careful because they will just snap apparently if you try and bend them i'm not talking from experience i'm talking from reading up a lot about it um which leads me on to one little subject if you are finding you're getting a bit sort of, you know, um, all you build is World War II fighters and it's kind of, you know, cockpit, engine, fuselage together, wings on, paint, deck or weather. Then you get another one that's cockpit, engine, fuselage halves together. Get a wing nut wings kit. Get one of these because this is completely, it'll drive you, absolutely, this is driving me around the bend. Um, and I've been looking in one of my um, air modeler books, the, the two that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, the ones, this this one here. And in the other one, this is volume two. In volume one, they actually build an E3. And the author says that, you know, it's a great, simple little kit, which doesn't take long. And it's really easy. And it's been a nightmare for me. And there's me thinking I'm having to go to Felix. So I think I'd better put that one on the back burner for a while. Oh, well, yeah, I still got this bloody cough. So um, I've also been making, you can see another way of doing turnbuckles is to get these little... This is 0.5 by 0.3 bore brass tubing and I've cut it into four millimeter lengths uh, and then deburred it and you can use those as well as turnbuckles so we'll have a look at those as well but um, 
I think for this one, because they're so prominent, normally they're sort of hidden between wings and stuff. But with this, because it's a monoplane and they're so prominent here, I think I want to um, use proper turnbuckles. I'll probably make them work for myself, but you can see here in that photograph there, you can see how sort of prominent they are. You know, so, um, yeah, we shall see how we go. Um, Right, so yeah, you've seen half an hour or whatever of modelling, so that's nice, isn't it? That little tail skid. I don't mean I've done a good job of it, I mean it looks great with the wood and the green and the silver, it just all looks lovely. Um, you, may, you may have seen when I did the Wing That Wings 11 last week, um, uh, you may have seen in the comments uh, a gentleman called Gary Vauxhall commented and said, I've actually done a book on building this. Um, and my reply was, if you'd like to send me a copy, I'll review it for you. So um, I got it electronically from him. It can be bought from KLP Publishing. I'll put a link to where you can get it from down in the in the description directly below this video. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, hit that, please. Um, my subscriber count is slowing down considerably. I think everybody's is. It's probably the nice weather in the summer and everything. Um, or the fact that I'm just crap. So uh, basically... Um, he sent me the book electronically and I was the idea was I would print the book out and I would show it as a page by page thing. But it's 200 and I think it's 279 pages. Is it 200, 297 even? So it's nearly 300 pages. So that's going to be like £100 worth of ink to do that. So what I've done, I've gone through the book and I've sort of, I haven't read it thoroughly. It's a bloody good book, I can tell you that. Uh, and it's got some fantastic tips in there, even if you're not building a Felix though, it's just absolutely crammed with ideas and they show you the product, you'll see you'll see it in a minute. But basically what I've done is gone through and picked out, I think it's about 50 or 60 pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the camera on here and then I'm going to look through my computer at the pages that I've got, talk you through it, and then I'll edit the, edit the pages in as we go. But... Um, it really is um, a, a bloody interesting book. I'm probably going to have to keep stopping because of me coughing, which is not good. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but it's just, just all about the editing, isn't it? So I'll speak to you all. Uh, well, I'll speak to you all. I'll be speaking to you all the time, won't I? Shut up, my you idiot. Right, let's have a look at this book. So here is the Felix Go kit again, um, which you saw me review last week. This is actually the late, as you can see it says late. The, the difference is, this is the book we're looking at today. Okay, this is the KLP Publishing Build Guide Series number 40. And as I said, there'll be a link in the description below. Building the Wing that Wings Felix Stowe F2A early in 132nd scale. And as you can see here, the only real difference in these two kits um, is the, the, the cockpit area. You can see the early ones had like a windshield and the later ones just had the cutout there. So you, there's different, I think there's only two different sprues in the whole model. So it, you can get this for either kit. The, the, the differences are... Are negligible but um this book with the rigging and everything it's if you're going to build one of these i would say this is a must-have having seen it it is absolutely brilliant thank you very much gary for sending it to me um i do actually need to get myself some software so i don't know how other people do it but i'd like to be able to put my computer screen on my videos if you know what i mean without actually physically having the camera on the screen i need to get some software that, that can do that and then i can review these books for you without because Kevin's actually sent me another one to review and I just can't do it this this is crazy doing it this way it's bloody stupid so uh, it's not doing the book justice but I want to show you this one so and this is the only way I know how to do it maybe somebody will let me know a different way anyway right so let's have a look at this book now what I'm actually doing I'm moving over to my computer and I'm looking at my computer screen and I'm going to click through the pages that I've got so uh, here you can see this is the front cover that's what you've just been looking at and as you can see, it's by Gary Boxall, and it's on the, the Felix Stowe F2A early. So moving on to the next page I've got, this is, this is page two. Um, and you can see it's basically all about the book, and he's talking about the, um, you know, the people that he, he built with and everything. He's th thanking Gary for the, the Kevin's thanking Gary, and, and it's, every, it, it's just all his sort of basically acknowledgement that's and everything there acknowledgements <laughs> i'll try and get my words out uh, and he's also thanking his wife flora for her enduring support so um yeah and my father for planning the model planting the model seed at an early age so that's uh that's an introduction and a few words about gary 
Um, so you can see here the contents of the book and it's just absolutely crammed. As I say, it's 297 pages and there is so much in there. It's, it's brilliant, it really is good. So um, introduction, okay, so this is the, that's looking at the other side of the model now. And you can see he's got that lovely swirly paint system on there, more on that later. Uh, so we start off with a review of the kit and this is done by Brett Green. We all know Brett Green, I think I look a lot like him. Um, or maybe he looks a lot like me, I don't know. <laughs> I actually saw Brett Green at on the Zuki Miller stand at Telford in 2018, I think. And he turned around and looked at me quickly and I said, Hello, Brett, don't we look at like each other? And he said, Yes, we do. <laughs> so there we go. Um, so I'm not going to go through the pages where they review the kit because you've seen me review the kit last week. But uh, it's a very good review and very interesting it is. This is Gary. He's in uh, Venice, uh, one of my favourite places in the world. Um, and he's talking a bit about himself there. Um, and again, he's saying thanks to his long suffering wife, Floor. I hope to be able to, to continue for many years to come. So there we go. Um, so building the model, this is a bit you want to see. And you can see a lovely picture there of the, the beach-in trolley and, the, and one of the underwing mounted bombs. So he started off in the interior, if you remember the instructions. He started off with the, with the fuel tanks. And the first thing he's had is to get rid of the seams on the ends is the worst. And also this, this theme around the centre because they're made in halves. He's obviously had to lose the rivet details, so he's raised, he's, he's added some strips of plastic there. He's put a rim around the top and the bottom of the fuel tank, and then using some um, Archer's rivets to get the, uh, the rivets back. You'll see them looking lovely in a minute. The gun mounts here, this is something Wingnut Wings do a lot. You, you know, with their Lancaster, they, you know, the cockpit sides are made in one bloody piece, and you do have to paint it. What he's done here to make life a bit easier for himself, he's actually removed those gun mounts from the actual side frames of the cockpit so they're separate parts you can handle them separately paint them separately and then fit them at any angle he wants i'm guessing um, and then you can see there's some more parts there on the on the on, the, on down the uh, down the bottom and you can see there there's some molded on pipe which he's removed and he's going to add it later with the uh, with lead wire and there we go you can see now the wood effects added we're sort of into page 28 now so as you can see i'm skipping a lot but there's a lot a lot of detail and you can see on here, and you've got pictures there of the of the washes and stuff that he's used. And this is what he does all the way through the book. It tells you exactly what he's used and how he's used it. It's fantastic. It really is a good book. Um, anybody you're thinking about writing a book about how to build a model, you should take this as an example because it's really good. Really good. Um, and there you can see some more completed cop. You've got the radios covered up with a canvas cover there. And uh, we've got the beautiful wood grain on the floor and everything. He goes on about wood grain as well, how he does it in different methods. And uh, I'm sure you've seen lots and lots of my videos. But, uh, there are a million different ways of doing it and loads of different opinions on which is best. Uh, you can see here he's got a map laid out on the map table with the compass and everything. And, um, and then you can see some more detail. He's had in the HGW seat belts, which I've actually got for, uh, for mine. So... Um, yeah, very, very nice indeed. He tells you how he's made the map and where he's got it from and all that. And there we are, we've got gas patch. Um, the floor area just about complies, just need to add some crystal clear to the instrument dials. So you can see here again, he's showing you crystal clear. You're adding some crystal clear to the uh, instrument panel to, to make the glass, the glass effect on the gauges. So and then you can see he's got the gas patch. You've got three types of um, turnbuckle there. And you can see on the right, the, the right top corner there, he's replaced the moulded plastic turnbuckles with the metal ones. Again, as I say, they need to be put in and you need to make sure they're on the right angle. So perhaps, um, you know, make up a little template from masking tape or something, or just measure the distance between the two and then make sure it's the same distance. And then when you put the other one in, they're the same distance again. So make sure it's on the right angle or it'll look weird. So here we go, and then we're into the cockpit, and you can see he's added the cables there. You can see once again we've got the HGW seat belts there added to the base of the pilot's seat seats, uh, and you can see the cables there going around the uh, the pulleys on the control wheels. Very nice indeed. And there we are, a beautifully built up cockpit. We're up to page fifty one now. Look, so you've got fifty one pages of all that beautiful cockpit coming together with all the cabling and. All the control pulleys and everything, it's just bloody gorgeous. A little bit of scratch building as well. Uh, and now we're on to the engines. Now these things are a bloody masterpiece. He says it in, in his, in his um, dialogue here how good they are. They are absolutely bloody brilliant. Um, and you can see here, now he had a spare engine. 
and he wanted to display an engine on the side but with no propeller and you also get spare propellers in the kit because there's early and late propellers but if all you want is the hub then the hubs are going to be the same so you can see there what he's done some scratch building with some brass tube plastic rod filing sanding drilling <laughs> and he's made a hub there with no propeller so that's how it would look if there was no wooden propeller between the two flanges beautiful work there gary really lovely and then you can see here he's going on about the um there's some pipes missing from the kit and he doesn't understand why they're not there because apparently there are locations there for them and everything it's almost like they kind of forgot to add them but uh, he's showing you how to simply make them with some um some tubing and some insulation with wire or some, well, some wire and some tubing and some insulation not tubing and there we go there's a pair of engines completed ready to go into the plane and you can see they're suitably flattened down and oiled up and everything and uh, very very nice indeed beautifully done beautiful now he's working on the radiators and you can see just using paint and stuff he's making them all really come to life he's added some scratch built brackets there to support the bottom of the radiators but so uh, you've got the louvers on there as well make sure you paint the grills behind the louvers before you fit the louvers here we are now up to page 76 and he's talking about the rust effects on the exhaust remember this is world war one guys so the exhaust would have rusted particularly with this thing because it was sat in the water most of his life uh, and here he's going on about how he's going uh, adding the um the wood grain effects to the propellers these are like a three-stage paint job guys. um so you've got the actual um you've got the actual wood grain to do and then you've got the the, the sort of the plate in the center as you have with all of them um and then he's using model master enamel there to touch the paint in the silver and then oh he, I've, I've skipped it out but then he goes on to use the hgw masks to get the which i've actually ordered now i've ordered the hgw mask set so you can go on and get the um the right shape on the propellers so uh yeah you get the there's, there's the metal ends on them so they've got metal ends wooden centers and then you've got the metal plate in the middle here he's talking about the um attachment points for the ailerons very very weak uh, there's no real attachment points for them so what he's doing is adding brass wire just to strengthen that area up we're up to page 100 now guys so now we're into the painting and finishing bit and this is you can tell we're at page 100 and there's 297 um pages so we're up to we've still got two thirds of the bit to go and we're practically finished with the build so there you go um 109 what Gary's done here, rather than paint the wings, what he's done, well, rather than just paint the wings, what he's done is, as you can see on the top there, he's painted them with a white undercoat or an off-white undercoat. Then he's put darkened shadows over masked ribs. And then he's used aviatic decals, which is just a green, like a greeny grey fibre. Uh, and you can see that. And they're, they're um, what's that? 2014 ATT32098, I think that says there. And he's used them those decals over the whole wing surface to get a proper fabric look um, really gone to town on this and you can see on the underside there he's done the same and used the clear dope linen uh, decals so you can see the same white paint underneath with the light brown highlighting and then when you once the decals go on you get a beautiful finish um, here he's showing you how to do, make a decal for the wing tip so he's got a piece of tin foil stretched it over the wing tip and then flatten it out and cut the decal to the same size slice up the front edge and then you can fit it all neatly and he also really goes on here about make sure you cut the decal to the right size and then you don't have to do any trimming afterwards so um, I'm not sure what the aviatic decals are like I'm not sure what they go down like or how well they stick I'll have to get some of you that go here now he wanted to do this um this paint scheme and he bought the, there's an Ames decal set for it but unfortunately it doesn't fit um what he thinks the Ames have done is made it for the 172nd scale rodent kit and then upscaled it to 32nd scale and it doesn't fit so he's made his own masks as you can see so he's painted the model white and then he's put the the mask on and he'll paint it red so yeah a very very beautiful scheme and there it is you can see all done all squiggly so uh very very nice and um he said that the time of writing is the only one he's ever seen built in 32nd scale with that scheme and now he knows why because the decals don't fit i should imagine the bleed through on the decals would be terrible as well with the red underneath so probably masking is the way to go uh, here you can see he's got the the black underside for this particular one and then he's gone with his abdomen wheels and done some weathering to make it all look a bit sort of seaworthy and everything is that the word i'm looking for 
and uh, here you can see he's making the the um, this is the handle that that's the side opening door there where they get the guns out there and the sides just behind the wings and you can see there how he's made the side opening handle with a piece of photo etch from his scrap bin a piece of wire and then just glued on the handle he's burnished it there in the MIG ammo burnishing fluid little tip with that stuff don't leave guns in overnight ask me how I know um, it basically rots them they dissolve there's a bit of comedy here um, <laughs> He's got a, uh, a rigger included in special limited release versions of the Felix Toe. He's got a little rigger spider there, um, sat on his, uh, on his kit. Now he, he goes on here about his using the gas patch and he only uses model cast and uh, rigging line. Um, I've had a look online and it's very expensive. So uh, you might want to look into that. It's very expensive. So um, there we go. And you can see he started rigging at the tailplane area. And that's like a major job just in itself. Apparently, according to Ray, this is probably the most difficult wing wing kit to build. Uh, and you can see there, look at all that rigging. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it, it, it'd just go out the window, wouldn't it? But as I was saying, I was speaking to Steve the other day because he's the uh, building one. And I said to him, you know, I think the way to build this is to build the fuselage and rig the tail before you add the wings and I hadn't noticed that's exactly what Gary's done here because once you've got those wings on it's going to be a hell of a model to have it's huge uh, so once the tail's all rigged up you start to add the engines now and you can see he's got that beam on the top and that is there because there's actually some rigging in the engine area that supports those struts that go up to the upper wing and what he's done is put some put some plastic rod there uh, just tacked it into place, I think with a bit of white glue or something. Um, and he's basically got that there so that he could rig those struts with the engines there and it didn't pull the struts together. So that's what he's done that. And there you can see the engines all fitted, looking stunning. He's got all the rigging under there as well. I think that's, is that fuel pumps in the middle there? The little propeller blades, they're driving something or other. This is the part I showed you in the kit. This is the uh, central upper strut, or central strut for the upper wing. Um, and you can see in the top picture there, you've got that sort of running from, from top to bottom. There's that thick plastic uh, wedge there. And then there's another one, sort of like an L-shaped one at the bottom. And you can see you have to remove them. And all that's holding it together are those tiny little molded lines. It looks bloody so weak, doesn't it? So what he's done is mounted it on a jig just to add some strength to it and then painted all the copper piping and everything. So uh, lots of copper piping on this model, really interesting. Um, and here you can see he's got it all upside down and he's fitted the upper wing centre section, all pre-painted uh, and everything. And you can see we've got the rigging in there waiting to be connected. We're up to page 169 now, guys. Now we're starting on the beach in trolley. Um, he's got rid of the plastic shaft and made a brass one. Um, I don't know why. The main wheels are a right pain in the ass. The seam line on the outside is easy enough, but the one on the inside goes around all the spokes and hub. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it would do. But, uh, how else are they going to do it? You know, I suppose they could have done a through mold that flat, but then you you might have had flash around the edges. So uh, there we go. And there's the beach and trolley all done up and chipped and worn and everything, looking very nice, isn't it? And then we got the wing and tail trestles. So they're absolutely gorgeous. So um, you've got one under the tail and then one underneath each float on the wings. So you can display the model and it's going to be nice and stable. You know, big old area to display it though. They did talk in the kit, I noticed, about um, about uh, having the wings removable. I can't see how you could do that and have it all rigged with all the control lines and everything. Don't get that. So here he's talking about rigging. This is rigging part two. Uh, we're on 186 now. Um, and he's showing you the different gas patch um, turnbuckles and mounting points and everything and he's going talking about the resin ones and then he goes on about the metal ones so uh, yeah very very interesting there he even goes in the quantities there how many you need I think and then here you can see how he's actually making a tie down <laughs> so he's got the little um, he's got the little uh, the tie downs there or is he, are these he's made himself with the gas patch ones either way you can make your own out of wire by twisting them or you could actually use the gas patch ones, but what he's done there, I think that's the wire ones. And I think I've done a video on those, how to make those, where you loop them around a, a pin. Um, and there he is, he's showing here 
uh, in the on the tail um, there are some cables that go back and they split into two so it's like a Y rather than just a straight cable I think they're control cables and in the kit they give you at the top there you can see they've got those little triangular photo etch parts and what he's doing there is showing you how he's actually split the photo etch apart so that he can um, put two turnbuckles in there and then just bend it back together so I guess once it's all, all on there and all lined up and everything, I suppose you put a tiny drop of super glue on there, a white glue or something, and that'll keep it all together. And you can see under there, you've got a sample of the original drawings for the Felix there, and you can see how it connects. You can see he's got two turnbuckles on there for one side and then just tie it in on the other. Absolutely gorgeous. Here you can see some more of how he's doing his, uh, his rigging. So absolutely brilliant and then he's using a, a pen to colour to paint the rigging on silver so uh, very very nice indeed and here we can see some pictures of the finished model I believe we're still looking at painting and rigging uh, yeah we're still doing rigging so um, there's the guns you can see we've still got rigging loose around the guns and this is what I said just now about these wing out wings kits if you are bored with just your you know your run-of-the-mill World War II fighters with these things, I think you really, really have to think about your build procedure. You can imagine, can't you, if you didn't paint that upper fuselage and then you had to rig it, you know, oh, I mean, imagine trying to paint it after it's rigged. Imagine trying to fit those guns after you fit all those lines in that are coming out there. Be an absolute moment. You really need to think about what you're doing, I think. And there's that really complex rigging on the tail of the control lines I was just talking about. Looks stunning, didn't they? You can see those doors on the side there open where you can um, see all the interior details so that's really good so we're still on rigging and painting we're on page 233 now um, and you can see that what he's done on the front here um, is flattened some brass some brass, uh, brass tubing so what he's done is put some brass tubing over a single ended turnbuckle and then flattened it and then a couple of archers rivets and it looks like the the bracket that goes onto the nose there where the fore aft uh, rigging cables go. Very, very good, very, very clever. Um, this, I've, I've mentioned this in another video. I think it might have been in one of my Gannett videos. But uh, you can see here, unfortunately, when he built this model, wing nut wings had closed the doors. Um, so basically, <laughs> he had a crack in the canopy. So to cover it up, he's actually um, put seagull droppings absolutely awesome idea fantastic so that's really good and uh, now we've got the gallery so I'm, gonna have, I'm not sure how many pictures I've got in here but um, you can see one there there's the rear end on its trestle um, and that's that so I haven't shown you lots of pictures of the gallery because I don't want to get done by KOP publication publishing for showing something so um, that's basically a sample of the book I would th thoroughly recommend getting it um, I can't remember the pricing and stuff, but as I say, there's a link down below and you can go and buy this book and there's, you could, there's lots, of, lots of different sort of how to build range in the range. Um, so go take a look. But this, this book certainly is very, very recommended. There you can see there's what's to what the propellers there. You've got the metal ends here. We've got the wood here painted grey and then we've got the wood there. So that's what I say. You've got like the three stage. But uh, yeah, beautiful model. Absolutely beautiful. Um, fantastic book and as I say for any World War One aircraft enthusiast I thoroughly recommend it because like you know the, all the tips and all the rigging and and, and, the, and and using bits and pieces for this that and the other it's just incredible so anyway guys there we go um, I think that's been about an hour so I will see you all next week hopefully for another Wingnut Wings Wednesday this has been Wingnut Wings Wednesday 12 as I say if you haven't already please subscribe I need some more subscribers where are we down here I need some more subscribers um, the count has gone it's slowed right down uh, but it appears like I say it appears everybody's has it's very strange uh, maybe YouTube are going in and getting rid of bots and stuff or um, I did hear that apparently if you don't look at the channel for quite a while they uh, unsubscribe you so I know I've certainly been unsubscribed from channels that I know I subscribed to a while back so yeah very strange Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next week. Uh, as I say, go get yourself this book and uh, go get yourself a Wingnut Wings kit and have some fun. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.